Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I am your host, Renee Bauer, and today we are talking about the perfect marriage. Is there such a thing? Is there not? Well, my next guest can tell you exactly what it's not. So let me introduce you to her. Sarah Morgan is a successful and powerful defense attorney in Washington, D.C., and as a named partner at her firm, life is going exactly how she planned. The same cannot be said for her husband, Adam, though. He's a struggling writer who has had little success in his career, and he tires of this and Sarah's relationship as she is constantly working. Out in the secluded woods at the couple's lake house, Adam engages in a passionate affair with another woman. But one morning, everything changes, and that woman is found brutally stabbed to death. And now, Sarah takes on the hardest case of her life, defending her own husband, who is accused of murdering his mistress. So that's a bit misleading because I don't have Sarah Morgan here today, but I do have the author of this juicy, twisty, twisty and utterly addictive thriller that will keep you reading all night. So the real guest today is Geneva Rose, and she's the best-selling author of The Perfect Marriage. And that's what I just read to you is that back cover from that amazing book. And she's also the author of the book, uh, the series Dead Woman Crossing. So welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. So first of all, congratulations on your debut book, um, hit the Amazon bestseller list. And yes. it is it is awesome. I read it. Um, I read it like really fast because it's so good. It's such, it, it's like truly a page turner. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So my question for you is, um, what is the perfect marriage? Well, I don't think it exists, and that's why on the cover, it's the perfect marriage, but the word perfect is crossed out, and obviously there's blood on the cover. I don't (laughs) think it actually exists, but in this book, these this couple, um, they think they have the perfect marriage, or seemingly to everyone else that's around them, they have the perfect marriage because he's got a great career, and so does she, but then behind closed doors, it's not, and I don't think any marriage is perfect no matter how it's portrayed on social media or to other people. Mm, right. And that's, that's exactly what we see every day is as we kind of scroll through social media and what, what people are putting out as that perfect life. And it's really not true. I mean, they're not behind, they're not being accused of murder. It's not, <laughs> you know, that's not happening behind client behind closed doors, but it's certainly not perfect. So what inspired you to write this book? Um, I came up with the idea like years and years ago of uh, a wife defending her husband in a murder trial because I just thought that would be interesting. Um, and I thought about like if I if I was a lawyer, would I do that? If I my husband was cheating on me, obviously, and I didn't know if he was like, actually murdered his mistress or not, would I actually defend him and try to help him? So that's kind of how the idea came about. And then it just it went from there. I thought it was, it would be interesting. And then it also goes from both points of view of the husband and the wife, and they both have their own side to tell. Mm. So after finishing writing this book, did you make up your mind? If you were a lawyer, would you be able to defend your husband? Um, I think it, it would definitely depend on all the facts of the case. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I could remove myself from yeah. it and actually be good for the defense. Yeah. (laughs) I don't think anyone could remove themselves. (laughs) I would have to really care about that person. (laughs) Speaking of, did you um, watch the series that's out right now called The Undoing? I watched the first three episodes last night and I can't wait to finish it. Yeah, it's it's good. It's I have really a lot good. of theories and I almost yes. saw a spoiler. And so I'm like, I need to watch this before I accidentally read a spoiler. So Yeah. And the kind of the premise is like, do you stand by your your spouse if something like this happens? And you know, it it's so it's such an interesting concept. And you don't know. Like you you don't know as as you're watching that, you don't know um, whether the person did it or not. So yeah. We won't I started watching it because so many people were like, oh my God, you should watch The Undoing. It's it's like the plot is kind of close to the perfect marriage. And I was like, well, I hope it's not too close. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so yeah, this book has also been optioned for TV. Is that right? Film and television. I actually got the finalized contract today that I have to go to a notary and get signed. So I'm going to do that this week. That's amazing. And- 
I'm excited. It's um, optioned by the team behind the Hunger Games, Twilight, and Divergent films. So they and know how to adapt a book. And so does that mean we are absolutely going to see the perfect marriage on our screens? Or like, what does that mean for, the, for people who are listening who aren't in the, kind of the writer's world? Um, well, first you, they option it. So that's just the option period. They have 18 months to get it greenlit. And then there's a secondary option period for another 18 months. So their goal is to get the film greenlit in the first 18 months. Otherwise, they got to pay me again to basically rent the rights. So, but I, ha I did talk to one of the producers a few weeks ago, and she told me that they were starting pre-production planning and just like the scheduling part of it. So I know that they're very, very enthusiastic about the book. Um, the founder of the company had been looking for a book like this for a while for adapt to adapt so I am hopeful and I think that they will get this green light because there are a lot of times that film and film or books get their options sold or their rights sold and then nothing ever transpires so but seeing how passionate they are I'm pretty confident hopefully. that's amazing <laughs> So I want to talk about your writing journey because I think everyone thinks that you, it, you know, you, you sit down, you write this book. Oh, it's easy. It's done. It ends up published and look at it, it's on TV. And just like that, it's magic. Um, but we know that that's not the case. And can you speak a little bit about your writing journey? And I know what it is because we've been friends on Twitter for a while now. And it's just really incredible. Um, just the path that you've been on and how you've come out and the just the the hope and the kind of the celebration period that you're in now because it has been um, not always a smooth road. It, yeah, definitely. I um, started writing books, like seriously, like I actually sat down and I was like, I'm going to write a book. I've always been a writer, but I got really serious almost five years ago. And I wrote my first book. Um, it didn't get an agent. And then I wrote The Perfect Marriage. And I got an agent within two weeks of querying. Like I had a couple of authors. And I thought, Ooh, my whole life's going to change. This is going to sell. She was just like, she's like, this is going to be a bestseller. I can sell this book. And then you go out on submission and I went on two submission rounds over the course of a year and a half and it didn't sell. And there, were, there was like kind of a, a relationship breakdown there where we just had different communication and working styles. So I ended up parting ways with her and I kind of had to start all over again because as you know, getting an agent is so incredibly hard. I had an easier time getting a film and television deal, which is insane because they are insanely hard to get than I did getting an agent the second time around because now That's I'm represented crazy. again, but I didn't get that agent until this book became a bestseller until I signed the series deal. And then I had a film and television deal and a film agent and my film agent introduced me to a literary agent. So that is crazy. So anyone who's kind of listening and saying like, I want to write a book and what's the path. So the traditional path is you write this book, you find an agent by, by, I don't know, like an act of God and they go, they take your book and they put it out into the world. That's the mission that you were talking about and they find a publishing house for it. And so often um, just finding the agent is like such a moment of like heightened joy because it's like, oh my God, I have something that I wrote that someone likes and now this is it. Like this, this is, I'm going to be a star. <laughs> I'm going, you know, I'm going to the movie premiere and it doesn't always work that way. And you know, there, it's so many highs and lows. It's, it definitely is. Um, and then after I parted ways with that agent and I couldn't get another one, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to submit this book to a small publisher that will, will look at it without an agent. And I ended up within two days of submitting to like six publishers, one offered, and that was the one I signed with. And they're a small publisher, like a crime publisher out of the UK. And I knew that I would have to do like a lot of work on the marketing side because they are a small publisher. But I was like, you know what? I believe in this book. I believe it will have great word of mouth. And so I was just like, I'm just going to sign it. The big, the big five deal isn't going to happen for me with this yeah. book. And yeah, I sign it. And what's crazy is how the film and television deal actually happened via Instagram that I started talking to a producer who loved my book. Wow. And there was other interest from another production company that reached out to my publisher. 
but the actual deal that went through was this producer who was raving about my book on Instagram and I thanked her and then we just started following each other and then the one day I told her I was like yeah I have film interest in my book so maybe you'll see it on the big screen one day and I didn't even realize she was a producer and she was like wait the film and television rights haven't been optioned and I was like no I'm like I kept my film and television rights out of my publishing contract and I don't know how to sell those so I the interest has to come to me otherwise it's not getting sold and she was like I'm bringing this to my team and it turned out to be you know the Hunger Games Twilight Divergent team oh my god that's you just like (laughs) you just made my heart flutter that's amazing that's incredible saying because she's like i'm bringing it to my i'm bringing coverage to my team and i was like okay cool i had no idea what she was talking about i i figured like oh maybe she has like a little tiny film company somewhere and i was like oh well this is like serious that's amazing so how did you go from a uk publishing company which was a small company you had to do your own marketing to a bestseller like you sold like 30,000 copies like really fast out of the gate which those are huge numbers for anyone for anyone period and especially a debut author um well I've worked in social media for about 10 years now um and I still do that as a day job and so I really, I, I, I'm very good at social media. And then I got really ingrained in the bookstagram community and literally handing out 25 copies to bookstagrammers. They just went nuts with it. They loved it. They posted about it so much. And then from there, it kind of just snowballed. Um, Ashley Spivy from, she used to be on The Bachelor, The Bachelor. She posted about my book on her Instagram, which has a large following. Um, and then... I went viral on TikToks with it or on TikTok twice with a book book marketing videos. So one of them accumulated 750,000 views oh over God. like three days. And it was literally like the put a finger down. I don't know if anyone watches TikTok, but it was the put a finger down. And you usually talk about yourself, but I talked about myself as a, if I was Sarah Morgan's character. And then I was like, just kidding. Me neither. Like, this is actually the premise of my book. And TikTok went nuts for it. I thought and, they were going to hate me for lying, like, but they were like, this is so clever. Um, you actually did something really funny recently too. And it was, uh, you highlighted a review that it was clear that it was a good review, but it was clear that someone had not read the book. He, that was like, not a review. That was a DM on my Facebook. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. He was trying to, obviously trying to strike up a conversation with me. I'm married and it's very clear on my Facebook too. Um, and he just DM'd me and said that. And so then I was just like, hmm, okay. <laughs> or oh, he that's... said like, oh, your book taught me a lot. And I was like, oh, this guy clearly thinks this is a self-help book on, the, on marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is a book about murder. <laughs> that's hysterical. <laughs> Even that little TikTok got over 100,000 views on it. Wow. That's... Are you able to um, connect the TikTok views to book sales? Um, when my one, my first one went viral, the one that was 750,000 views, it shot me up into the top 200 on Kindle and in paperback for three days when it went viral. So it went, my sales just skyrocketed on Amazon. Wow. So the this power one, of social media. Oh yeah. And like after that, I did the same thing for the first book in the Dead Woman Crossing series. Um, I did the same put a finger down for Dead Woman Crossing and my editor noticed because it got 500 sales over a two day period and this was pre-order sales and it had been stagnant and she found my TikTok because she was trying to figure out why there was all these sales and she was like hey I found your TikTok and I was like oh that was gonna be a surprise I was gonna tell you about it after the weekend (laughs) and she's like no we saw the sales and we had to see where they were coming from. (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. So let's talk about that book. Is that book um, the same publisher as The Perfect Marriage? No, that one is with Book a Tour, and they're owned by Hachette. So that one is, and that's why also it's under a different name. It's a pen name, J.R. Adler, instead of Geneva Rose. So that one's with a different publisher. So can you just explain why you had to write under a pen name? The publisher required it. I signed these book deals. So I signed the one book deal with Bloodhound. And then two months later, I signed the other one just because it took longer to finalize it. Um, And they required a pen name. One, it's very different, whereas The Perfect Marriage is a very fast-paced thriller. Dead Woman Crossing is an atmospheric mystery, like a detective series. Um, And they required a pen name 
I think one, because they're the bigger publishers, so they didn't want the smaller publisher to kind of get some of their marketing efforts, even mm -hmm. though it's the other way around. The Perfect Marriage has sold way more than Dead Woman Crossing. <laughs> but that one just released, in all fairness, right? Uh, it came out in September. Okay. And so what's the premise behind that one? That one is about a detective. She's an NYPD homicide detective that decides to move to a real town called Dead Woman Crossing, Oklahoma. And she moves there with her young baby to get away from the city and the stressful job and to be close to her mom. And when she gets there and she's the chief deputy on the police force, um, it's supposed to be a very easy job for her. But then there's a murder. And the murder is in the exact replica of a actual real murder that occurred in Dead Woman Crossing, which is where the town takes its name in real life, um, in 1905. So it's a copycat murder and she's trying to figure out who did it while also trying to fit in with her mother's new husband and family and just the town itself that is not very welcoming to new people. And this is a series. Yes, I actually just finished the first draft of the second book two days ago. <laughs> so when will we see that on the shelves? Uh, April 2021, so like four months. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's fast. I know, they are very quick. I have to do structural edits, like I'll get them back next week and I'll have three weeks to do them, so. Okay, so Geneva, I'm, I'm sensing like a theme here. There's murder in all of your books. Should your husband be worried? I mean, I tell him that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I've written one book that didn't have murder. <laughs> It's not published. <laughs> no, I think I think you're good at it. <laughs> I'm like, that's what I like to write about. It interests me. <laughs> uh, and how did you see so you do social media for your your daytime job? I almost said your real job, but I like I I can't say that because this is a very real job. Um, is will it become your full time job in the future? Um, that is what I'm hoping for. I actually cut down the hours from full time down to thirty hours, like a month and a half ago because I just couldn't do both with the editing and the writing and the promotion and then the film and all of that. I was like, I can't keep doing this. So I would like to eventually just to do the writing, but I'm a very type A person. So it is kind of nice that I'm like scheduled for something yeah. versus like writing. I could do it in the morning, at night, whatever. But my job, they require me to work a certain hours. <laughs> I'm the same way. I took all last week off to write all week. And do you think that I was productive? I was more productive when I was working in my office full time. Like I get so that, much more done because I schedule it in. That is exactly how I am. I feel, I feel like I'm better under pressure. So the less hours I have, the more I work. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's twisted. That's the only reason <laughs> I'm like still keeping this job too. I'm like, cause I don't need to do it, but I'm like, oh, it keeps me busy and it <laughs> keeps me very structured. Yeah, I, I hear you. So um, what do you say to someone who is out there who has this dream of writing a book and they don't know how to start or they just feel like it's, it's kind of like a pipe dream and they'll never get to the place where you are? I actually get this question a lot in my DMs and I always respond to people because I'm like, I still think of myself as an aspiring writer. Um, and I can remember when I first started out and I would say the best advice is just come up with an idea. I like to do character sketches and like setting sketches ahead of time and then get a little bit of an outline and write that first draft as quickly as possible because you can't edit a blank page. And, and then I also recommend to read a lot. And then read books on writing, like I like Story Genius and Save the Cat Writes a Novel. Mm -hmm. And even Stephen King's On Writing Memoir is just great for motivation as well. That's one of my favorites. I, and also I love Bird by Bird. I don't know if you've read that one. That's I haven't just, read that one. It's fantastic for motivation. Um, and that's what I say. I'm like, just do it. I'm like, I actually wish my biggest regret is not sitting down and actually really trying to write a book sooner because I always thought it was too daunting of a task and too much of a pipe dream. Yeah. And then when their rejections start pouring in, cause they will just don't stop. Think yeah. of every no as a noble attempt. Keep going. Yeah. I mean, I think I racked up like 115 agent rejections and right now my book's on submission and oh. I think I lost 
count of how many rejections we've got to this, you know, at this point. And it's just like, you have to have a tough skin and just keep going. Never like, I think I did the same thing with you as you did. Like I got the agent. I'm like, that's it. Like, this is, you know, that this is, this is the path to success, uh, a successful writing career. And then like, you just stop. And so you realize like, okay, now you just have to write something else because there's that potential that this book may have got you the agent, but it might not get you a book deal. Exactly. I I have racked up over 300 rejections between wow. submissions and agents. And I'm on submission right now with a new book. The only thing I kind of like, which I didn't like when she told me she was going to do that, was she was not going to tell me any rejections until the entire round was done. And then she would let me know. And I'm like such an impatient person. So I was like, yeah. I think I need to know. But then I was like, oh, I remember the days I would get a rejection. That day was over at 10 a.m. I was like, yep. today's done. Yep. <laughs> Those are the hardest, I think. The, sub the submission rejections are the hardest. Those are the ones that were like, kind of like gut punches because we've had a couple close calls and my, when my agent shared and when she shared like where it was from, it was like, it, you almost like have a grieving process. And there was mm -hmm. a day that like I was in such a funk because I was so pumped up and then you get that rejection. And so I think I'd rather not know, like, give me the good news and just withhold the bad stuff. <laughs> I agree. I've, I've only been on, re or I've only been on submission, like since right before Thanksgiving, like the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So like it hasn't, that was last week, wasn't it? Yeah. It, I haven't even been on, I've been on it for like a week with Thanksgiving in there. So I'm like, obviously I haven't probably, she hasn't heard back, but I keep thinking like, oh, maybe she heard back today and it's a no, but yeah. I'm glad I don't know. Although I want to ask. I know. But I, I got an email from her today about foreign translation rights for the perfect marriage for French translation rights. Cause they reached out to her. Although she doesn't have anything to do with that because I signed that on my own. But I thought it was an offer for submission. Ah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I mean, this is good too, but. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I was like, oh. So how do you find the time to write all of these books? Well, I'm a binge writer. I'm either going to write a book in like one to three months where I'm not going to write one at all. <laughs> and that's honestly, that's just my personality. I'm just, I don't know over the top with everything, I guess. Um, so it's all or nothing. And when I have it, like I have it set, like I do it by like, I'm going to write, you know, 2000 words a day or on the weekend, I'm going to write 4000 words and I'm not going to do anything else until those words are done. And I do it like that. I know some writers do like, I'm going to write a chapter each day or mm -hmm. something like that. Word, the number of words have always helped me and just being able to plan, like, I know what I, what my first drafts usually look like in terms of length. So I know exactly how long it'll take me to get there then. Do you uh, tend to overwrite or underwrite your drafts? I am an underwriter and I am happy that I am because I couldn't imagine having to cut a lot. Yeah. And I like to like really just get the bare bones. My first drafts are always between 60 and like 72,000 words. And then I beef them up in the second draft and yeah. really like, you know, do the descriptions and all of that and expand. That's, that's how I write too, but I don't plot. I've tried and I, I cannot do that. Like I just sit down and just kind of go and see, to see what happens. I wish I could or an outline. I've done both. I've had like very heavily outlined books and then I've had other books that they're not outlined. So like there's one I'm working on right now and I don't have an outline. I'm just doing it. But um, the perfect marriage was the middle was not out, or outlined. It was just the beginning and the end. Mm. So I had to fill that in. <laughs> Ah. So like even some of the twists that are in there, that a little twist throughout, um, those came about from like writing sprints, just setting a timer for 15 minutes and writing as fast as possible. Awesome. So um, your advice then is just to sit down, put your ass in the seat and, and type and write because it's not going to write itself. Yeah. Don't doubt yourself. You never know. You literally never know where it's going to take you. I have a friend who she went out when she actually went to try to get an agent. She got an agent on like a Thursday and by Monday she had a massive penguin deal. Wow. And she, that honestly, like I was so happy for her, but then I was just like, Oh, there's just tins of, je there's just a tinge of jealousy yeah. in this industry and you can't stop it. And I was very happy for her, but she's a Cinderella story. 
Yeah. yeah. And, but the, and that's not the usual story. Like most people don't have that. And I think that that's what you tend to like judge yourself or compare yourself with. And you, that's why you expect it to happen that way. And when it doesn't, it's like, oh no, now what? Now I have to write another book? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Especially when it's so close to you. Cause I had known her for yeah. a couple of years. We were like email pen pills and we were exchanging chapters and talking all the time. And then I was like, a gut punch. I was like, why didn't that happen for me? <laughs> I know. I know. So what is next for you? What books can we have to look forward to? Um, where there's the second in the series. Um, and it's supposed to be titled Black Heart Lane, but there might be a title change, but it's the Detective Kimberly King series. And then hopefully I will, there'll be an announcement out for the film and television rights for The Perfect Marriage. And then if this book sells on submission, perhaps that, but I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not even like counting on it because I did that before and it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's an amazing story though. It's just, I think that your story and why I really wanted to have you on here was just because it was this, the, you just kept going, you kept picking yourself up and you kept, I mean, imagine if you stopped at rejection 101 or rejection 299, you know, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be holding your, your book in your hand. And I think that that's the moral is that no matter what, you just keep going. Yeah, that's this, this, and I think honestly, most things just require a lot of perseverance if you want to be kind of an outlier in there. And publishing is one of them because it's, oh, it's, it's so hard. There are so many gatekeepers. There's so many people that have to say yes and they have to say yes at the right time. Yeah. And doesn't always happen. Thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to watch your journey. I can't wait to watch The Perfect Marriage on Netflix <laughs> or, to, That's where or, I hope wherever. <laughs> or wherever it ends up because it will <laughs> definitely end up um, somewhere. And then we'll be talking about that instead of the undoing because <laughs> it yes. will be awesome. <laughs> thank you. So thank you and good luck. And uh, everyone needs to pick up a copy of The Perfect Marriage and read it because you will not sleep the day that you get that because it's that good and it will, uh, it will keep you, it'll keep you turning the pages all night. So thank you, Geneva. Yes. Thank you for having me.